Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're gonna have some fun in the play queue with this Naya Colored Equipment deck featuring four copies of Donitha alongside the Magnetic Snuffler of all cards. So our game plan is pretty simple, trying to discard our expensive equipment and then get them back attached to our five mana creatures. Donitha, a five mana 4-4 with first strike, vigilance and lifelink. And then when it enters, we can put an aura or equipment card from either hand or graveyard onto the battlefield attached to Donitha. Now we're mostly going to be bringing it back from the graveyard, but having the option to put it in play from hand can also come up. And then there's the Magnetic Snuffler, which can only bring back equipment from our graveyard. And then whenever we sacrifice an artifact, we can also put a plus one plus one counter on it. So that can also come up if we sacrifice a treasure token, or if the opponent ends up giving us some map tokens to explore with. So these are the six five mana creatures. And then what equipment are we trying to cheat into play? There's a Dragon Wing Glider, giving the equipped creature plus two plus two flying and haste, and comes attached to a two two rebel token through the Formiridon mechanic. Now, keep in mind if you play Snuffler or Donitha they will come attached to the glider then Formiridon triggers and then the glider will end up attached to the 2-2 rebel token now that can have advantages or disadvantages sometimes you would much rather get in with a six power flying a life linker to immediately get some life back but uh, sometimes it's also nice to have your threats split up a little bit more so you still have a 4-4 flyer if they answer your Donitha and then there's the Battle Chair, which is essentially a 6 6 trampler, also working with the Formiridon mechanic. And then our other equipment include the Bladehold War Whip, giving the equipped creature double strike, also with Formiridon, so it's still a fine play to make early. And then finally, the Sword of Once and Future, giving protection from blue and from black, as well as plus two plus two. Now, luckily, there's no awkwardness in this deck, unlike the other swords, which might give protection from red, which then doesn't let you equip a Dragon Wing Glider to the same creature. So at least blue and black stays far from our Naya colors. And then this can also let us surveil and maybe get back some cheap instants from the graveyard. And there's 10 instants we could replay with our Sword of Once and Future, including two copies of Get Lost to deal with larger creatures, enchantments or planeswalkers, demand answers as a cheap discard outlet to put those equipment in the graveyard in the first place and draw two, and then Lightning Helix, a nice tool against aggressive decks, dealing three and gaining three. And then at three mana, we also have two copies of Temporary Lockdown, which is a bit of a nombo with our Rebel tokens we get from Formiridon, but it is still a nice tool to have against the other aggressive decks in the format, especially Boros Convoke can be weak to a Temporary Lockdown. And then at four mana, we've got Big Score as another discard outlet, making two treasure tokens as well, so that can give us a bit more mana to set up our future synergies. And then at two copies of Astor, which when it enters can maybe find an equipment among the top seven cards of our deck. And then equipment can now equip for just one mana, so we can equip our Battle Chair and Glider on the cheap. And then Astor also has great synergy with the War Whip, since that further discounts the equip abilities by one mana. So with War Whip and Astor, we can equip all the non-War Whip equipment for free, so we can easily move them around and maybe make a hasty trampling Astor out of nowhere to try and close out the game. And uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. Our mana base also has the new Elegant Parlor, which is great at maybe surveilling, giving us a bit of card selection. Can also put an equipment in the graveyard to set up our other synergies. And then we've got some more mana fixing, including Jetmere's Garden, and then some channel lands for utility. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a keepable hand. Can at the very least discard our uh, War Whip with a big score to bring back with Donitha. Put on blue white and a gaze gonna fill the graveyard here. Might be a mentor Hoddy Jin deck with a helping hand to bring them back. Opponent happy to keep everything on top. And now a slide of hand. Okay, can fire off a uh, demand answers. Could also just play the War Whip to start applying a bit of pressure. Yeah, I mean, that's reasonable. It's probably not going to go the distance. So, I'll pass it back. This time, Get Lost hits the graveyard. More sleight of hand. Uh, 
and we can discard the War Whip. If they counter this, they may not counter Big Score. Alright, we've got plenty of 5 drops to choose from. And a Battle Chair we can discard. Opponent with Prankster, so I'll put a stop end of turn. Let them decide on the Prankster first. And then I'm probably gonna cast the Big Score while they're tapped out on the off chance that they have a counter. Okay, so with a treasure we can cast one of our five drops next turn. And there's Haughty Jin with Get Lost available for one mana. The land is good. So now we can Get Lost Haughty Jin and then still cast a five drop. Opponent with a Gaze in response. And then Danitha. Probably lines up a little bit better than the Snuffler. Could have also played Snuffler first, and then when sacking the treasures, it could have picked up two plus one counters. But I uh, just wanted to make sure get lost resolved. And we'll get back the battle chair. So we can now apply a bit of pressure. Astor makes it so we can re-equip the battle chair pretty easily. And now with the map tokens, Snuffler has another chance of growing. Holly Jin is back. Okay, so could also just play the glider hit for 10. Astor could enable us to put the glider on a creature right away, so that's also pretty good. And then with the War Whip we can actually equip creatures for free. So there are some decisions to be made. I guess for now maybe go for glider hit for 10. Not sure if our opponent will hang back with a Haughty Djinn next turn. They can also play Prankster as a chum blocker. And then we can maybe reassess. Maybe Snuffler, get back War Whip. I guess we don't have Astor in play then. Still like applying pressure while the ghost is clear. Opponent not happy with Hardy Jin, maybe they have a way to bring it back on the cheap. A mentor first, so that can gum up the ground a little bit. And our opponent's gonna pass it back, but they do seem to have some interaction here. Okay, so let's say we start with Danitha, bring back War Whip. Or we can just make it Snuffler, so the explorer's a bit more useful. Okay, and then we want to probably grow the battle chair. Find a land. Okay, let's go ahead and attack. And a march gonna phase out our flyer. Okay, Pwn falls to eight. And next turn with Astor, we should be able to re equip pretty easily. Recommission back Haughty Jin. This time entering untapped. That's certainly relevant. And they go digging. Helping hands. I imagine is pretty good here. And a prankster on defense. Okay, so opponent stepped out. We know what they're working with. So we just want to make a big double striking trampling creature. Sword could also help attack past the blue creatures. So yeah, step one Astor. Finding another glider, I want to say. And then I can play Sword, and then, yeah, pretty much move everything onto one creature. Can make it the Snuffler. Costs one mana, but with a War Whip gets discounted. 
I guess the War Whip itself we cannot move since that does cost one mana, but I can just play an untapped land. And that's one mighty snuffler. Oh yes. And attack. Awesome. Hit them for 28. Trigger sword twice as well. And that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And uh, we're missing a discard outlet. And some early removal. But I'll try it. Put on black green. So next turn we can play the War Whip. And then even without a discard outlet, we could still put the Battle Chair into play with Donitha at least. Now a bat might disrupt our curve a little bit. Still have ways to take it out. A Lightning Helix, Lockdown, get lost. So let's surveil instead. Big score looks great. So now we can discard the Battle Chair. And Glissa has a problem. Could draw into a Lightning Helix to take it out. So I'm probably going to big score before the attack. And an Invasion of Zendikar's next. Okay, so our opponents are ramping as well. Glissa can transform the Invasion if they want to, even by hitting us and removing counters, I think. But nope, opponents attacking the Invasion. So discard the chair and found a lockdown. That one's not quite going to work. There's a lightning helix. Okay, I mean, I can still play Danitha first and then they're likely going to take it out, but technically does trade for Glissa and then we'll still have the battle chair. And of course we can still Helix uh, at instant speed by sacking the treasures. Although if we wait and deploy Snuffler first, we can maybe get two plus one counters out of it first. Another bat. So I have to decide now what to do. Could Helix Glissa? Could also let the bat resolve and then they might be incentivized to take the lockdown. And then I can just Helix the bat to get it back. Yeah, let's let this resolve and they can decide what to do. Takes a lockdown. Anglis is gonna stay back. And obliterators next, so maybe they're planning to fight here. They've got a green left, so that would be bad for us. Just a dread knight to draw. So we want to find Get Lost as soon as possible as a clean answer to the Obliterator. So for now, we could use our treasures, take out bats, cast Lockdown. Also gets rid of my token, but maybe that's a good thing so they don't have a 6-6 six, six to fight with the Obliterator. Could also play Astor and see what we find. The sword would go a long way. All right, there it is. So I could play it now. And then next turn, suit someone up. Only one mana to equip with Astro in play. Same with a battle chair. There's a Dread Knight. And an Edict, so goodbye Danitha, I guess. Although, how much do we care about Astor's discount? It is relevant with a battle chair. A little life gain. Once we suit up Danitha with a sword, does seem pretty relevant. Even if it's just a sword being equipped, we can get back a Lightning Helix. So yeah, actually, let's sack Astor.
So take seven. And another lightning helix. Okay. So suit of Donatha. And then we want a lightning helix. Probably the Dread Knight, so they can jump with it. Attack, threatening to get back Lightning Helix at the very least. Could also attack with both and take out Glissa. Maybe that's fine, actually. We are getting a lot of life back. So they can jump Donatha if they want to. Opponent does not. And then a glider seems like a good top deck. Do I need a land? Not really. Free Lightning Helix taking out the bat now. And a War Whip could be nice. So our token down. Donath has protected from Go for the Throat. Although another Edict might get rid of it. And there's Glissa once again. Now it is 7 mana to re-equip the chair, so Astor would be useful there. And Dread Knight's just gonna trim Donatha over and over. So taking to the skies with Glider seems useful. Could have also considered actually just putting the glider in the graveyard since we have Snuffler to get it back. Maybe that was better, although another bat might have messed things up. So yeah, play glider. And attack. Dread Knight trumps, we still gain six. But yeah, our opponent could be getting ever closer to a fight spell. Shieldred's acceptable. We'll gain them some life now. And another go for the throat. Alright, time to suit up Danatha. The bat can't block it, so we'll be able to fly over. So this is 5 mana, does not leave much else. But if we connect, we could get back another lightning helix for the win. Keeping the bat back on defense also doesn't really accomplish much since we have protection from black. Can block Glissa for free. Although the one life gain is also not going to make a difference. Once we suit up the glider, we can hit for 8 plus 3 more from Lightning Helix. And... Uh, can put these in the graveyard now. Maybe a land would have still been okay to suit up the chair. But that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Do we have a keeper? We're missing an equipment, but we get to dig pretty deep to find it. And then we may need some removal as well to survive. A Lightning Helix gives us a 2-mana play, although kind of uh, more interested in digging with demand answers. And then we can discard our sword to eventually get back with Donitha. Opponent exiling two cards. They might be kind of playing a Pia exile deck to make a bunch of Thopters. With maybe Quintorius as another synergistic card. Alright, for now I'll just keep up Get Lost. Can also hit Planeswalkers. And we're happy to pass a turn with a big score available. Can discard War Whip. They do have their own big score. So maybe they're going bigger with cards like Chandra, which we can still answer. Union gains them some life. This is definitely a more controlling deck. All 
All right, Snuffler could also be worth it, but since we have double Donatha and expect the first one to die, we'll start there. And then get the sword back. And pass. Sunfall exiles Donatha. Still have our sword. And then now probably go for Snuffler. The treasures can represent some extra plus one counters on it. No need to equip right now. And there's already a Lightning Helix in the graveyard and a Demand Answers we can get back with our Sword of Once and Future. Burn down the house to wipe the board. Alright, I'll uh, float some mana then. Snuffler lives. Until they point another burn spell at it. And a Lightning Helix will finish it off, fair enough. Ooh, Battle Chair. Could also put the Battle Chair in play with Donatha. That seems good. And then we can still equip the sword just to increase its toughness some more. Only one mana thanks to the War Whip. Alright, so we've got a pair of 6-6 six, six creatures. Burn down the house is not going to work, but uh, Sunfall will do it. And then we still have big score to dig towards our next creature. And we just need one to stick the landing with three equipment to suit it up. Arcane Bombardment makes sense. We'll take that out with Get Lost. But a Sunset Revelry, so if they hit Sunfall we're going to be really sad. Just a Lightning Helix, that's acceptable. Alright, so definitely need to get lost to Bombardments, and then what else can we do? Might want to just suit up the Rebel token with both equipments. So we get to Double Strike and get multiple 2-drops back. So that's 1 mana plus 5 mana. Yeah, that should work. And then we'll get a Demand Answers on Lightning Helix. And we'll also get to Surveil a bunch. need those. Start with a Lightning Helix. And then Astor I can keep. And then Donatha maybe also keep and then we'll discard the one in hand to the demand answers. Okay, and then get rid of the bombardment. Also pretty important. So we'll see what's next. Can they find an answer to our 8-8 double striking trampling protection from blue and from black? A rebel token. They do not, and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, sure we can try this out. 
good removal against aggro. And then Astor finding more of our equipment could be good. Put on blank green. And Maverick, so yeah, this might be an Insidious Roots deck. So definitely want to hang on to the lockdown until that shows up. Turns out Temporary Lockdown is one of the best answers to the deck. There's Tyvar. Can maybe take it out with a Lightning Helix. Tenacious Underdog, Dread Knight, so yeah, plenty of creatures that get exiled by Lockdown. Lockdown kind of the perfect answer to any Typhar deck, really. Since they're naturally gonna have lots of 1 and 2 drops. So, yeah, I guess we wait another turn. For now, play Parlor. Demand answers, doesn't seem needed since we already have a big score. on getting back underdog. Alright, so they're not adding anything else to the board that we need to lock down, so we could go for it now. Although Astor also stabilizes us. So we'll let them overextend. Don't find any equipment, that's fine. And a pylon with Convoke takes out Astor. Lets them surveil as well. And there's the Insidious Roots. Okay. So time for lockdown. What's next? Another parlor. Don't need that. They can still Blitz Underdog, but next turn we get to play the chair. Or we can... Uh, Big score to dig for Donathau or Snuffler. Yeah, I suppose if we big score we can still play War Whip at the very least, which blocks profitably. So that's probably worth it. And then, do we hang on to the battle chair? I think I should discard it. Gotta believe in the deck. Alright, find another one. So we'll play the whip. And then I guess play the chair next turn if we don't draw anything else. Path of Peril answers our token. A little surprised to see this in a deck where all creatures die to it. And the Dread Knight is back. Okay, well, I guess we don't have much of a choice here. Play Battle Chair. Next turn we can give our token Double Strike if it survives. But possible they have more removal in hand. There's another Roots. That's scary. At least Boseju has already been played, so they're unlikely to have a second to blow up the Lockdown. And Tyvar's back as well. We can take out Tyvar, although we're close to taking out the opponent here with a 6 power Double Striking Trampler. And there's Donitha, okay. So let's say we play Donitha, get back Battle Chair. That's five mana. And then can quite equip the War Whip this turn, but getting the Life Linker in play plus another Battle Chair seems worth it. How relevant is it taking out Tyvar? Yeah, their plant tokens making mana could certainly be relevant, although if we go face, we're more likely to take them out next turn. Opponent's all too happy to block. We get to take out all three creatures. And then next turn we can potentially suit up Donatha with a battle chair as well. Or just a war whip on the existing one.
So your opponent's making moves. Makes two planes. They can immediately tap for mana. Ready for round two. And they're gonna pile on now. Surprised they didn't wait to see where we put our equipment first. Opponent's now at 8, so they seem dead to the War Whip attack. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's 5 mana. This is 6 thanks to the discount, so we can do both. So may as well cycle this. Okay. So had they waited with a pylon, they might have gotten another turn here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Can play parlor on one, hope to mill some expensive artifact. Sundown pass will keep. Okay, and then now we'll demand answers, discarding the war whip, even though it is currently our only play next turn. Put it on green white enchantments. Alright, Lightning Helix could come in handy. And now we're hoping to discard the battle chair, or we could put it in play with Danitha, whereas Snuffler gets back War Whip. And Naturalist could be worth taking out. Let's go with the companion instead so they don't draw Fodacity. Big score was perfect. And discard battle chair. Could have main phased it in case we find another removal spell that we fire on the naturalist. Calyx could be a problem next turn, but we should have multiple blockers lined up. And we did actually find Lightning Helix, so we can still play that at instant speed. And then... Let's go ahead and maybe start with a Snuffler, since that can grow off our treasure tokens, which I'm somewhat likely to use. Get the Battle Chair. And pass a turn. Do they have an Ossification? They do. Okay, so probably take out Calyx in response, or we can wait to see where the plus one counter goes, I suppose. And then we might go for Naturalist. And hope they don't have a second ossification. They do have another naturalist. And we get to untap. Okay. So, big score for mana. Wouldn't be able to do much else unless we draw removal. For now, Donatha can either put in Battle Chair from hand or get back the War Whip. Although we are missing green mana here, so it's going to be tricky to equip. I guess a Battle Chair might still be better here. And then could keep Battlefield Forge in hand to discard to the big score next. Yeah, I guess that's uh, acceptable. So Snuffler can attack. Petrify as removal, alright. So, could be bad now if uh, Calyx grows large enough to attack past Danitha. Well, luckily, they're out of enchantments and Glider the draw. So, let's see. Play Glider, not quite presenting lethal. So, then it might be safer to 
play more defensively here. Big score discarding Battlefield Forge, see what we find. Get Lost would go a long way here. Find Astor instead. So Donathak can attack. And I'll play the Garden out. And then next turn Astor can help us move our equipment for one mana, including the Battle Chair. And yeah, our opponent explodes. Sweet, onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing second white for lockdown, but uh, get to cast Helix. Astor hopefully finds an equipment, and then if I can put it in play. Facing Golgari. And Red Knights. Okay, good target for lockdown once we get to it, so... Gonna avoid using Lightning Helix. Although it still buys us a lot of time, to be fair. If Glissa shows up, I might regret casting it now, so maybe worth taking 3 damage. They've got another Dread Knight, this time using the Adventure. Okay. Take out the one in play. Did find the second white source after all, so we'd have been able to lock down, but we'll just wait until they deploy Dread Knight once again. For now we can play Astor, and at least try and find an equipment, or maybe better yet, Big Score. Although there's nothing I actively want to discard, so maybe it's still Astor. Find a Battle Chair. So next turn Donitha can put that in play, or we could big score first to put it in the graveyard and try and get more value. Liliana, good answer to Astor. Yeah, let's get some power on the battlefield. The token is less valuable because of her own lockdown. Although Donatha does have a replacement, so we're less upset if Donatha gets answered in a way. May as well gain four. Alright, opponent's gonna take out Donatha anyways. I guess we could have double blocked if we wanted to. Liliana makes his discard. A land can go. Alright, so I could finish off Liliana and then cast Lockdown, hoping they didn't jump with a Dread Knight, which would be a little weird. And then we basically reset the board. Yeah, I think we just attack Liliana and then set up our big score. Probably big score discarding big score. Could do that now to hit our land drop. Find another Donatha. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to cast a lockdown yet. Shieldred's next. And a War Whip the draw. Can put that in play with Donatha. Yeah, I guess we'll attack here. And then we're gonna end up using the lockdown. And then Donatha puts in War Whip. So it's gonna be Donatha and War Whip versus Shieldred. Could double block Shieldred, although it's a little risky in the face of instant speed removal. Thanks to the discount from the War Whip, we can actually equip Battle Chair for 6 mana next turn. But yeah, we can't afford to take 4 from Shieldred, or we'll die to the ability. Attack from Cottage is actually fine, since we get to gain 4 of Donatha now. And we can double block Shieldred.
maybe this was unnecessarily risky if they had a cut down on the token, which was maybe the only reason why that attack makes sense. Then they can kind of blow us out, so I should have just blocked the cottage and then take the two from Shieldred, and then next turn equip Battle Chair and likely win the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, sure, we can keep this. Discard Glider to either demand answers or big score. And then Donitha can now bring it back. Opponents on an Esper enchantment deck. Plenty of two mana instants available. For now, another companion is fine. So yeah, we'll demand answers. Finding two more demand answers, all right. So now what we discard, it's probably something between Helix and Get Lost. Could have also main phased it in case we drew a tap land. Although with big score we should be fine. Companion number three. Yeah, I mean, their top end probably involves more four toughness creatures or enchantments. So I'll hang on to get lost. Maybe I just don't need another demand answers when I have big score. Astor's not bad. Although I'm kind of tempted by big score, even though we don't have any equipment left to discard. Yeah, I guess Astor's fine. Hopefully find an equipment, and then we can discard it with big score next. War Whip, pretty good alongside Astor as well. So currently planning to get back a Glider. Our opponent might be playing a deck full of Enter the Battlefield effects that they're trying to double in various ways. A welcoming a vampire, okay. Good target for Lightning Helix. So, can attack with Astor, and then maybe Big Score plus Lightning Helix this turn just to take out the welcoming vampire. Opponent takes it. Discard the War Whip. And Helix Vampire. Okay, so next turn we can play Donitha, and with some leftover mana, still maybe move some equipment around. Cathar on Astor is fine. Can re-trigger it with Lightning Helix. So we have quite a few options. Can get back Astor, and then if Donitha goes for a War Whip, we can equip right away, but I guess we don't have haste then. So, maybe I'm not in a hurry to get back Astor. And for now we can just go Donitha for Glider. Although having the War Whip would be nice alongside Astor, to be fair. So, yeah, a few things to consider. Maybe we just go Glider and then Helix to Brutal Cathar. Could do it now, could wait. In case they do have some sort of board wipe. A Loran to blow up my glider, that's too bad. Okay, maybe set up an ambush if they attack all out. So I'll get Astor back to block the companion. And a battle chair is not bad. Alright, decisions, decisions. Donitha get back a war whip versus just going for a glider is probably better. And then with Astor we can equip for one mana. So we may as well attack for six in the air. Do we want them triple blocking Astor? Yeah, that's acceptable. Okay. 
Okay, opponent's at 4, so Lightning Helix is almost lethal. Another Loran on the glider, that's fine. They're still technically dead on board. And that'll do it, awesome. Okay, so we got to see this Naya equipment deck in action, and it seemed to work pretty well. Now, of course, we play this in the play queue, so don't expect it to perform on the ranked ladder, where decks like Monorat and Boros Convoke can uh, kill you before you can maybe cast one of your 5-drops. So, yeah, not the most competitive deck out there, but uh, pretty fun if you're a fan of equipment. So and that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.